Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. First time passing, like, subscribe and share. Um, anyway, today I wanted to talk about the extended family members of EEA nationals or EU nationals. Um, they now have the right to appeal if they were refused in the past. Um, this is based on a case law called Banger. B A N G E R. Um, Banga was um, a non EU citizen seeking a resident card to enable her to live in the United Kingdom with her unmarried partner, who was a British national. In circumstances where both have returned to the United Kingdom from another EU member state, I think it was Holland or something, wherein the British national worked for some five years and apparently she was refused. They appealed against it and they won. So because they won the appeal, they're now opening up to extended family members and saying that they can now appeal if they were refused in the past. The thing I get concerned about is that it's fine. You know, lawyers are jumping up and down and saying, oh, fantastic news. And, you know, they're advertising like UK migration lawyers will appeal and help you get your decision, get the decision you deserve. The thing with this is that appeals cost money. This went to the upper tribunal. So you know it's in the tens of thousands. So it's fine if you've got money and you can pay for appeal. But it's sad for those people who the same rule applies, but because they don't have the money, they cannot afford to appeal against it. And they, their family members cannot come in if you don't appeal. So that's the unfair part of it. You know, I know that the immigration... The Home Office, they are seeking to bring in people into the country as long as they've got money. And I guess this is a way, one way of discerning whether or not someone's got money. They've got money to appeal. They are more or less entitled to come into the country. So on the one hand, it looks like great news. You know, you can go out there, you know, all come in. But it's not that easy. You can all appeal. They make it sound like, oh, it's great. You can appeal. They're encouraging people to appeal. It costs a lot of money. And people cannot always afford it. A few exceptions can afford it. But anyway, um, let me give you a little of the history. Um, 1st of February 2017, the right of extended family members only applied to the EEA EU national and was not applicable to his or her spouse or civil partner. Um, so now the extended family member, or then the fem extended family member, could not rely on their partner. Because you, you think like if, um, if I was married, then I could, my husband would be saying, okay, he's going to bring over his mother, his father, his aunt, his uncle, but he is not the EU national. He's an EU national because of me. We're talking hypothetically now. So he's an EU national because he's married to me. And then, you know, in he'll be trying to bring over his extended family based on my nationality. That stopped on the 1st of February 2017. It could only be the direct family members of me, who is the EU national. Okay. So, um, but now extended uncles, aunts, nieces and nephews, they can appeal if the application was refu refused. And that applies to the EU national. OK, not the spouse. Updated legislation extended families of EU nationals whose applications were refused can now appeal. Solicitors are jumping up and down with glee. One solicitor said, this is fantastic news. Why? Because appealing is very costly and they can get their dinner on the table now. They've been having a rough time in the past because when you think about how hard the immigration the home office has made it for immigrants to get through on their get through on their inter, in the indefinite leave to remain and 
leave to remain and discretionary leave to remain, they've been applied, they've been employing solicitors to help them with this. And the solicitors' hands were tied because of all the new regulations. So they now see this as a way of, yeah, we're going to, we can get an income now. You know, no disrespect to them because we all have to live, we all have to eat. But this is why they are relieved and they're very excited. Um, so, let me see. This is significant. The Immigration European Economic Area Nationals EU Exit Regulations 2019 the most important of the changes are to give non-EU extended family members of EU citizens a right of appeal against refusal of a family permit. Now, I think a lot of people are looking at that and thinking, oh yeah, it applies to extended family members of the spouse. It does say specifically the extended family members of the EU national. Okay. Um, by this reference, the Immigration and Asylum Chamber. Oh, I said that one, didn't I? Okay. In section appeal rights, the text from the 29th of March 2019 extended family members applying for a family permit, resident card, or registration certificate may be eligible for a right of appeal against the refusal of such document if they meet the criteria of Regulation 36 in brackets 4 of the 2016 regulations and has been added to reflect the 2019 amendments to the Immigration European Economic Area Regulations 2016. So this does ap um, only apply to e EEA and EU nationals. But the thing is, that criteria of regulation 36 um, in brackets 4, I don't know what that is. That's why I always say I'm not a, I'm not a legal, um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't have immigration experience. I just share information. And if you're, if you're unclear, you just need to, you can Google it even. You can just Google it, 30, what is 36 bracket 4, of the Immigration Regulations 2016, and it will tell you. But I think it's just to reiterate that it does apply to the EEA National, providing you are their, um, di you are a direct descendant of the e EEA National or a carer of a direct, and you cannot get, um, you that's the only way you can stay in the country. Through, the, through caring for a British national. That's all that is to do with. But please do read it, because like you say, I just gloss over things. I'm very simplistic, um, and that is why you need a lawyer. And always go to www.gov.uk. Don't um, let other um, lawyers in, you know, jump on you and try to get your money. Make sure that they are registered with the Law Society because there are a lot of people out there who, sad to say, are not kosher. Um, the facts. The respondent is Roseanne Banger. This is how the appeal got overturned. Um, well, the, the rules regarding extended families got overturned. Um, the respondent is Roseanne Banger, a national of South Africa, aged 50 years. Her partner was is Mr. Philip Rado, a British national and hence a EU citizen, with whom she resided in South Africa between 2008 and 2010. In May 2010, Mr. Rado, having accepted a work assignment in the Netherlands, and Miss Banger migrated to the EU member state. So. It looks like, just to round it up, we have Roseanne Banger. She she's South African. She met British. She met Philip Rader, who's a British national. They weren't married, but they lived together for two years in South Africa. He then got a work assignment in um, an EU EU country, and she followed him to that EU country. Okay, um, they lived together there for a period of five years. 
during which the respondent was granted a Dutch resident card in her capacity of extended family member of an EU citizen. Now that's interesting that they would class uh, somebody who lives with you, who is, in, you know, who is your partner, Okay, you're not married to her, but they classify that as an extended family member. That is weird, isn't it? Because I would have thought, just because, just because I'm not living with a person, that's my direct, um, that's my direct, you know, if I was to put it on my next of kin, he would be my next of kin. So to me, he's direct, not because I'm not married to him. So what they have, what they, what they did was, by law, they're saying she's an extended family member. And I think that is why they had to overturn it. In 2013, following a sojourn of some three years in the Netherlands, so they stayed in the Netherlands for three years, this is where, why they got the Dutch, well, this is why the National got the Dutch permit. And because it's all EU, they're entitled for free movement into the UK. So the respondent and Mr. Rado decided to move together to the, to the United Kingdom. The respondent applied to the Secretary of State for a resident card. That's Bangor. And this application was refused on the sole ground that she was the unmarried partner of Mr. Rado. So they refused her because as far as they were concerned, she wasn't a direct relative of the EU national. So that's not good, is it? That's not good because it's almost like they're forcing you to get married. You can't live with somebody and expect to get your citizenship or expect to gain entry into the country if you're not married. That's basically what it's saying. Anyway, the Secretary of State's decision, the Secretary of State refused the respondent's application for a resident card in the following terms. Your application has been considered under Regulation 9, which states that to qualify as a family member of a British citizen, you must show that you are either the spouse or civil partner of the British citizen. An unmarried partner is not recognised as the family member of a British citizen. You do not have the basis of stay in the United Kingdom under the European Economic Regulations 2006. That's dread, isn't it? So even though we live in a modern society, so to speak, you have lots of people living together, lots of people not married. What this is actually saying is actually upholding traditional standards of marriage. That's what it's really doing. But I guess, to be honest, in their, in their you know, in their, what you call it, their support or whatever, I mean, anybody could say, you know, I'm living with this person and they're not, just as a way to come into the country. I understand it from that perspective. Because that could happen but at the same token didn't look good for that lady anyway by article 20 of the treaty on the functioning of the european union union tfeu every national of an eu member state is a citizen of the union a status which confers the right to move and reside freely within the territory of the member states the right to freedom of movement of workers and the associated benefit which may be enjoyed by certain of their family members are regulated by directive 2004 oblique 38 oblique EC of the Citizens Directive. In deciding to make this reference, a tribunal has given particular consideration to Articles 2 and 3 of the Citizens Directive. So, every national of an EU member state is a citizen of the Union. The statute which confers the right to move and reside freely within the territory of the member states.
tribunal gave consideration to the principle of non-discrimination on the grounds of nationality, including Article 18 of the Treaty of the European Union. Tribunal identified the differential treatment which the Citizens Directive accords to family members as defined and all others of the family unit in a broader sense. It recorded that the only material difference between the present case and Surinder Singh is that the respondent is the unmarried partner of the EU citizen concerned, whereas Mr and Mrs Singh were married. Surinder Singh was another case law where they appealed. Um, they were married, but they had a similar process. But because they were married, they got through. And what they're saying is the only difference is that the circumstances were exactly the same, only that Bangor and Rador were not married. So what they're trying to say is that if you can, if you can apply a rule to one, you need to apply the rule to the other. And that the fact that the couple is not married should not make a difference to whether or not they have entry into the UK. And so because um, as an unmarried partner of the British national, and because that's classified as an extended family member, and because they were successful in their appeal, this extension has now been extended to all the family members. And that is why they're saying that extended family members of the EU national or EEA national can now appeal because of this case. OK, so on the day the UK was set to leave the EU, 29th of March 2019, the Home Office had published updated guidance in relation to the extended family members of EEA nationals and the family members of British citizens under EU law. The guidance published on the 27th of March 2019 states that the appeal rights of extended families have been updated. In the section Appeal Rights, the text from the 29th of March 2019 Extended family members applying for a family permit, resident card or registration certificate may be eligible for the right of appeal against the refusal of such document if they meet the criteria which I said before. This follows the disruption of appeal rights for extended family members and brings the 2016 regulation back in line with the 2006 regulations. This is good news for extended family members who now no longer need to try to judicially review decisions but can appeal against refusal decisions. So maybe it is a bit cheaper because they don't have to go through the, re the judicial review which is more expensive and they can just appeal against the refusal. The time these changes will have effect may well be limited, but they at least mean that citizens' rights should be better protected until Brexit fallout is known. So it looks like you have to get on, if you are interested, you have to get on the ball quickly, because it seems as though if we leave Brexit, all of this is going to change. So those of family, extended family members who think they might have a chance because they are related directly related to the EEA national or EU national and they want to live in the UK, they get a, better get on board quick because um, we don't know what's happening with the EU if, if, if the UK leaves the EU. Now I know that was a bit garbled and a bit jumbled but I do hope somewhere amongst it it makes sense. Like I said I do try to simplify it but sometimes in trying to simplify it it can be a bit more confusing but I hope not. Like I said always get in touch with an immigration lawyer if you have concerns. I do get people writing to me and asking me about immigration questions. I can only answer basic questions like I said I don't have the authority um, to give you legal advice and that's all for now. Bye bye.